We want to always resort to the easiest, easiest way. We don't want to think things through. We just think, oh, they said do your best. Okay, I've done my best and that's it. I'm not going to make any more efforts. You know, or, or oh, I'm, I'm going to keep on trying because uh, God wants us to be at peace. I think we have to be careful the way that we we look at things and we place expectations and burdens on, on people and look at them and feel like, no, you haven't done the right thing because you did this or you didn't do that. And can we drop pride and have mutual respect? We can't yes. drop it if that is who we are. We're not going to drop it. I don't think anybody is born prideful. I don't think you're born with pride. I don't know. Can I come in, please? Oh, yes, yes please. Relationship dynamics are, are not straightforward. They are not 2 plus 2 equals 4. Relationship dynamics have a lot, a lot within them, you know. And if we are not able to deal with that, if we're not able to deal with that, that complexity, we might make worse what we are trying to better. And so where does it start? It starts from my motive. Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to reestablish if I want to? It's a good thing to. If you are if you are a, if you have been attacked and insulted and abused, you, you don't want to be the person that will go back and say, let us make it work. But there are times you should be the one that should do that. I have said that how a person responds to you is not your responsibility. Mm. It's, not, it's not your responsibility. I want to re-emphasize that. If a person says, I don't want to continue with this, for heaven's sake, leave him alone. Not even God will force him to change his mind. Leave him alone. Also, as um, Coco has said, that you can pray for him, and you should pray for him if you are a Christian or any other thing. You should pray for that person. But we must understand that we are obliged to, to be peacemakers. It is something that is inside us. It is something that we have as a nature as Christians. It's also beneficial. And it is beneficial, yes. That's why he says it is it's a pleasant thing for people, families to be together. It's a pleasant thing for brothers and sisters to be to be one, to be united. It's a it's a beautiful thing. It, you can imagine you can just imagine where you come together, have fun, go back, you are thinking about your brother, you are thinking good thoughts. And you can turn your back and know that you can, your yes. brother or your sister has your back. Has your back, yes. It's a good thing. So when you are pursuing peace, you are pursuing a good thing. You are trying to make things work the way they should. Like I said, like like also I said, some people are just crazy, and you cannot do anything about it. You just there are times you get to a point where you just cannot do anything about it other than pray about it. Yes, please. And if I might add, so one other thing that I, I like to say is, with that point of some people are crazy, I know I was talking about people who are just, who are wicked and who do wicked things. But yes. there's another type of crazy that there is. People who just don't know, who really do not, because they are unable to process things properly, who really do not know that they are foolish, mean, wicked in the things that they are doing. There are people who really do not know because yeah. we can assume that because I know this thing, it's easy to assume that the next person knows it. 
honestly sometimes it's almost like you have to assume that some people were dropped on their heads when they were babies i say this a lot because there are times when you watch people and you cannot even fathom what they're doing so we so can we get to ajiri can we get to a point where we begin to remember that this person may not actually have the intellectual capacity to process things properly so when they do something to me they don't even realize really really that they are hurting me so that, that is a way that i sometimes used to overlook some things with some people i just feel like this person doesn't have the mind the capa capacity to understand so i am wasting my energy no no no, no. you were brought up you were brought up by the same parents. you had it the same matter. you had the same it's level of exposure no I don't, I don't think so I, I don't think so you know just because you were brought up ho, hold on I, Coco, i'll let you talk about that just because i was brought up in the same home with someone honestly it, it doesn't mean that because even twins even twins will have a lot of issues that they disagree on so seriously in that person, you the i'm sorry but i think siblings really have mostly because of their exposure and mm. the second Chances under which they were exposed and brought up in, I think intellectually, but they have a personality. A, I think there's the same level of in, intellectual intelligence. It, it, no, I think you're wrong in that, and also emotional intelligence because they were brought they have up a personality. In the Everybody they has their individual the personality. Parent. They were brought up in the same environment. But, but if they didn't have different personalities, why then can they not be as reasonable as the person who is being treated in this way? So for that person to recognize, oh, I'm not really the one asking for this thing. And I really don't want my parents to do this. And so therefore I want to push it down and be good. Why are, are those people not as reasonable? Because we're all different. So you can I say something? <laughs> can I say something here? Um, Uzo, I can authoritatively to say to you. I'm trying to be honest. No, you're trying to play the devil's advocate, no. not being honest. It's a fact. Coco is no, it, no, 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 it's not. And I'll tell you, unless, of course, you're defending those that are mentally impaired. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Mentally impaired, as in you've been diagnosed with schizophrenia, one of those mental illnesses that you know you've been sectioned you've been institutionalized in, in a home knows? or something what if you never but, an evaluation no no as far as you you're an individual you're not sectioned in some psychiatric home mm. trust me we all know the difference between good and bad evil and good is a choice it is a choice it is a choice to it, can i can i say this we all have the propensity to be evil, to be bad. No one has a monopoly of it. There is a daily choice, an hourly, a minute by minute, second by second choice that we make to be good people. And there have been times as an individual that you're like, oh, let me just do this. I'm talking about little things like going past a traffic light, for example, jumping the traffic light. You know that it's bad. But you're doing it because you're in a hurry. You're like, oh, there's no traffic. There's no what you call it, camera. So I can jump it. Now you know your. I'm, I'm talking about even trivial, trivial things like that. But I can say to you that a sibling that is doing harm to another sibling or individual, hmm. there's no defense. There is no. It is a choice. I think that's the point I just wanted to make. You know, we cannot excuse bad behavior ben, based on like Adri was saying. They grew up in the same house. They had the same values. Okay. So if, if my sibling, if I have those, where did I get my values from? My parents. So if my parents, it couldn't have been that they bothered to give me those values without giving my siblings. After all, growing up in the same house, most times, you know how it's done. You pack the children together and you talk to the lot of them together. So it's not like Adri was sectioned and spoken to and the other ones weren't spoken to. Everyone was, you know how the family meeting thing goes and they're like, hey, hey, this one did that, this, that, that. And you're learning. That's how you learn. No, no family so, meetings. But individuals are being corrected. So your point so is that somebody know. has chosen to just be It is a choice. That is the point. Okay. Even with narcissists, you know, I told you I've done a study on it. Um, when do people become narcissists? When they're between ages two and four, something clicks uh, up in their head. 
and they choose to be that person. We're not going into that topic, but the point I'm making is this. Even though that child made that decision to be another person between ages two and four, it is unanimously agreed that it is still a choice because it's not every child that had that traumatic experience, whatever it is that triggered that feeling of hate towards the whole world would end up that way. It was a choice that that child made. So tell me also, if a, someone that is between the ages of two and four decided to hate every other person than themselves, mm. and psychologists are saying, oh, it's a choice, they knew what they were doing, right? Mm. Are you telling me about someone that is not even a narcissist that didn't sit down to say, I'll hate everyone, mm. but my sibling? This so, is a choice. So your question is yes. So, so that's what I'm... You know, you know the funny thing about it? The funny thing about it is that without meaning to come across as if I want to say, you see, I'm right. What I will say is at the end of the day, we have ended up saying the same thing. Because no, we haven't. <laughs> because <laughs> no, no, we no, 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 because because, because no, the way the way that I'm processing it is if this person has made that choice to be to do this thing, right? At the end of the day. You, something has to be wrong with you to have made that choice. No, nothing <laughs> is wrong with you. Okay. Nothing is wrong with you. You okay. chose to, for reasons okay. best known to you, because I tell you what, the, for the reason of hot, you want to hot the person, you want to make the person go through what you think you went through at the hands of your parents or whatever it is you that is possible. That's you. your reason. So your, your capacity uh, is that, that's the limit of your capacity. Your capacity is quite sound, if anything. That's the limit of your capacity. Your capacity is, is quite high up there. Because you know what? Have you ever been in a situation also where you've had to plan to deal with someone no i don't give spend my time no 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 let, let, let me put it this way i think i put it wrongly have you we've all found ourselves in in a situation where we're like you know what i'm gonna give him a taste of his own medicine let him know how it feels mm -hmm. you must have done that before now think of those very rare few times it takes a lot of planning you know that maybe you do it the once and you're like you know what this is not me i'm not gonna let him change me oh my god is, is this what evil people think about because you have to sit down you have to skim you have to plan no, you have me. to go no i'm not strategizing it this way mm -mm -mm -mm. i've done something like that before and i'll tell you i'm not ashamed to say it, and i'll tell you what this is about someone in, i'm gonna cut it short in three minutes this is someone that owed me money a good friend of mine not very close but very good friend of mine and she'd owed me this i think 400 pounds there about for a long time and each time i asked her for the money because she bought things from me she'll come up with excuses 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 even paying the money into my account to get her something and i still bought the thing i didn't seize her money I still bought whatever it was she asked me to buy for her. I still gave it to her. Now, this carried on for nearly two years. It became very obvious that she didn't want to pay me my money. So you know what I did? It's one of those times um, I was traveling and she wanted us to travel together. Yeah, one of these short European, European trips. And I paid him much. She paid him money into my account to get her a ticket because we were supposed to sit together. Bearing in mind that she's been owing me this money since and I've been begging her and she won't give me my money. She'll pay money to my account to get her things and I'll get her things and give, you know, account. But on that particular occasion, two years after, I said, you know what? I'm going to give her a taste of her own medicine. So she paid the money to my account for the tickets. You know what I did? Bought the tickets, all right. Still continue to ask her for the money. She wouldn't bring it. Last, last. You know what I did? I called the airline and I said to her, oh, my friend that is traveling with me blah, blah 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 gave them her name that she just lost her dad well her dad had been dead anyway so it's not like i did anything horrible she just lost her dad can you please cancel the ticket and give the refund that i'll be the one traveling okay mm -hmm. and they canceled the ticket and they did the refund into my account because remember she credited my account to buy that ticket mm -hmm. and the money came straight into my account and you know what i did just to give her a taste of her own medicine i didn't let her know mm. day of travel she was supposed to come out to mine and we we're supposed to go together <laughs> ah, i left the house like 40 minutes earlier yeah and i won't pick my phone 
Mm. And she called and she called. I had all the flight details. She didn't have it. So it wasn't a matter of her coming to the airport. Now, what am I saying? Now, what am I saying this? It was the only one occasion in my life that I just said, you know what? No one has a monopoly of being, oh, you know, be, be me. So, so, no, no, no. Look at eh? so, so the point I'm trying to make also, it did take a lot of planning and scheming. And I said, this is not life. I don't want to be this kind of uh, because it took a lot of planning. It took a lot of staying up. I, and I don't like, know about like, that. But you know, I'll only I'll for two, over two years. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Actually, you're laughing. I'm not a bad person, but I just no, no, no. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. I just, I just admire your smartness. When, 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 um, when I say something like what I said, I will never play the devil's advocate. You see this thing you're just talking about? It took you two years, and you did it once. I would have done it right the next month, and and I would do it a hundred times. So I don't play the devil's advocate. No, I'm a bad person. If that is what you call a bad person, I am a very bad. I claim it. I'm a bad. Person. Oh, so, sorry. I, 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 so, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. she had eight pounds change, and I remember sending her a message. You know, after a few weeks, and said, "Give me your account number. I'm owing you eight pounds." Because her ticket money was eight pounds more than what she was me eight pounds. All the time that you wasted that you were upset me, I wouldn't even give you eight <laughs> So no, so my point, my point is, my point is, I just really want people, okay, so Coco, you don't have to accept it. But honestly, I believe it because I've seen it. I've seen it. I've experienced it where I finally come to realize that this person is actually not well from other things that they've done right so mm. so yeah a person who who destroys relationships different relationships at this point i would have been thinking they're doing it because they have chosen to do this to me but when i've seen other things that they've done i come to the conclusion that this person is really not well so it's actually a waste of my energy to be upset at them you know if you recognize this sometimes it can come and it, it can be a bomb honestly so that you don't spend your time being upset being angry at somebody who doesn't even know better. I'm not playing devil's advocate, but that's that's my, my understanding sometimes of some of these things. And coming from another perspective, the expectations that are put on firstborns and first children are too high. They are not the sub parents. They are not the father and mother of the other children. Stop mm. giving children responsibilities because they're the first. Yeah, parents. They sometimes create them. Parents. So. parents, I'm drawing your ear. Stop it. That's a valid Those point. First born, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. first bonds, those first set of children end up resenting the younger ones because they see that they are not treated on I've the seen same that. Basis. I've seen that. The same basis. Because you have such high expectations of your first child mm -hmm. you put such a strong sense of responsibility that person that that, that <laughs> he's not giving the opportunity he or she is not giving an opportunity to be a child that's why i'm a i'm a prop i'm a i'm a strong prop um i i'm a strong uh, promoter of speaking up for yourself because my mom used to really try to do that and you know, you, you my, my Huh? My adults, my adult siblings would not do something for themselves that they ought to have done. And my mother would expect me to inconvenience myself and my family and my job and whatever it is. I start to say to me, so if I wasn't here, don't you know you should be? I'm like, no, <laughs> this is an adult we're talking about. And when those people have those expectations of me, if I can do it, I can do it. If I can't do it, I'm not doing it. I will never subject myself to bullying by anybody. And I want everybody to have that license. Do not allow it. We're all equal. I have, friend, I have a friend growing up. I think it was in our GS2. Her parents split up. There were six of them. She was the firstborn. And automatically, she, she was did. expected to take on the role of mother of the younger ones. At what age? So she just grew up with such a sense of I am in charge. I mean, I'm bringing, you know, <laughs> cooking for, for, for everybody at that age, making sure their clothes are ready for school. At what age? 12? But it's not a bad thing. 
it's not a bad thing but we need to yeah we just need to be there's, there's always a, a balance i think I, I tend to agree and disagree with you actually but I, I i see the sense of what you're saying and trust me i'm going to take from what you've said to preach to other people about this um um what do you call it too much well, pressure now i'm the third child you know so I, I wouldn't say pressure was put on me I, I would pretty much say that i'm the harry of the royal family as in no you know i i i, I you, it. I'm you, you know I'm, and i loved what i was because i i kind of like stayed out of job in that sense but yeah. I, I think what you're saying i can actually sense it with my first sibling a lot of pressure would have been put on her because you know in an african setup at least you know when they say oh if the first one the gaggles or the other ones are followed that means that. once the yeah. first one goes <laughs> astray and <laughs> sometimes see that you pressure see, can actually see. destroy that child and their relationship and their relationship yes yes so I've, I've picked up something from you about i don't put a lot of pressure on my first daughter but bearing what you have just said I'm actually going to start checking myself. So yeah. if there are times that I've put pressure on her, I must have at some point. It is, you know, it's something I've taken home from what you've just said. Right. Pastor, did you want to, is there anything that occurred to you in the, during the time that we're talking that you wanted to um, let yeah, us I want to see. share with us? Yes. Yes. Every child is an original. Thank you. A unique individual every child every child even though they may be brought up in the same home every child is an original every child is an individual a unique individual every human is a unique individual <laughs> and whenever we relate with a particular individual we see that person uniquely now, when two people are being brought up in the same home, yes, we teach the same values, but they don't always turn out the same because they are individuals. They are unique individuals. Their makeup is unique. The way they respond to issues is unique. Mm -hmm. The way they respond to instructions, the same instructions, is unique. If you tell a particular child, wash this dishes <laughs> um, one child you will find a child does that dishwashing differently from the way the other child does it they're doing the same thing and so every parent deals with a child observing knowing and recognizing that our child is a unique individual and must be treated that way now but when there is favoritism it can bring in envy it can bring in hatred it can bring in um different emotions within and among the children themselves that could last their entire lifetime so such things can actually start at the home also we can have such things that through the other relationships siblings will have mm -hmm. the influences that they have uh, had in their lives apart from the home it can oh, cause them from school from friends from school, yeah exactly from friends so you have those influences so you can have situations but even observing where, other people's families right they can even observe and exactly take so, you have, so you have influences that could actually Coco. change their values change their values okay so we need to recognize that every child every human is unique now in oh, dealing you something here <laughs> so sorry about that my really my, my, my thing here i got you oh, i know sorry, sorry. Can, can you say it again it was just my my son that he um 
He just got back. I haven't seen him in a day, so yeah. Sorry about that. It's so cold. with that in mind, what did I miss that was so crucial? <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe after maybe afterwards you'll see it afterwards. Mm. Mm. Okay, I would I would maybe just briefly. Okay. As parents, bringing up children. We must recognize that every child is a unique original. I got that. About the washing of the dishes. Yes, okay. Beyond. They are, they are individually different, unique. The way they respond to different things is unique. Even if they were twins, and somebody said even twins do not do things the same way because they are unique individuals. And on the matter of the dishes, if you ask a child to wash dishes, she could walk, or he or she could wash those dishes in a particular way. Ask another child. We will do it differently, but they will both wash dishes. And we may think, oh, that's just the way he is. Yes, that's the way he is. He's unique. He's an original. He cannot be like the other person because he's an original. A unique person. We cannot you see, that's why it was um, the seven habits of uh, highly effective people. Stephen Covey said something. He said that we must first seek to understand before we seek to be understood. What is this saying? Many times we want to assume a particular person is this way or that way. No, we must first really understand from that person's point of view. When we do that, we are showing respect to that person. I'm not saying that we should agree with everything everybody says, but I'm saying we should understand what the person is there. Those are two different things. I don't necessarily agree with everything everybody says, you know, Sometimes I'll go back and check what did I say, and I'll go back and when I check what I said, I find that I won't even agree with what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so it is very, very important that when parents are dealing with children, every child is unique. But we don't show favoritism. I'm happy at the some of the foundations or the causes of sibling, sibling estrangement, sibling rivalry, emotional distancing. I don't want, you know, in your heart, you know, you could sit in the same room with a sibling, but you are not there. You, both of you are not just, uh, you're not sinking. There is that emotional separation between the two of you. Some of these things are the things that have resulted in that. The way you handle your children is very important. Don't compare your children with your children. Don't say, oh, see what he's doing. That person, he does what he's doing because he is a unique individual. He doesn't have to do it like the way Ngozi does it or the same or the way Bola does it. No, 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 no. He may do, let him achieve the goal. You build him up. If he's doing something that is wrong, you you tell him no this is wrong and this is what is right you can't tell somebody what is wrong without telling the person what is right and if you do that the way you so the way you treat a the way you treat a child is unique to that child but at the same time you are just to all of them you are fair to all of them they must see that you are just and fair to all of them alike So, if a person is a slow learner, another person is a quick learner, you treat the slow learner as a slow learner, but you are teaching both of them the same thing. So, both of them realize that you respect each and every one of them the way they are, but you want them to become better people. You want them to, to grow, to become 
uh, what they ought to be. And one of the things that they ought to be as a family, we cannot maintain is to be united. Yes, it is true, as we grow and become adults, we have our own families. We build our own homes, separate from, as a matter of fact, when we are leaving our home, I'm starting up a new home, it is completely different from where we came from. Completely different. You might want to let, maybe this is the way your mom used to handle issues, but you and your wife or your husband who want to handle issues in a particular way, you have started a different, unique family. But with the way, the way you are brought up, has it affected you? Does it uh, moderate some of the things you do? Yes, it does. But you are unique. Your children are unique. And you must deal with them like that. Andrew, and when you, deal with them, uh, when you deal with them, have the future in mind that when you leave, these people must still be, be uh, agreeable to each other. In fact, they should still love each other. They should do it. If we are not able to do that, you have the possibility of either emotional estrangement, physical estrangement, but I don't want to do anything with you. And what someone was asking me, do I have a direct sibling that, um, yes, yeah, I have. I have. There are things we don't see eye to eye. But does that make me stay away? No, as much as possible, we want to be able to find ways of re-establishing or strengthening the contact and the relationship that we have. Do I force it? No. Why do I do it? I do it because I have a unique relationship with somebody that tells me, love my neighbor as myself. I have a unique relationship with somebody whom I love and he tells me how to deal with people, with my brothers and people that are not. You understand? So, I see him as unique. If he wants to live, if somebody wants to live their life in a particular way, and I find that it could lead them into the wrong path or in the wrong direction, or even a dangerous direction, it is my responsibility to be able to say, no, this thing will lead you in the wrong direction. I can't make the decision for the person. I can't make the decision for the person. If a person has chosen that he wants to fight everybody, he wants to stay away. I can't change that his decision, but I can say this is this is a better way. This is a better way to go. If he chooses to go on that other direction, I will, like I said, I will want to understand him or her from his own perspective. Let me see why are you in this? Why are you put it quote unquote like this? Why do you do things the way you do? Who gave you bath? <laughs> Who uh, in Jaboski? Who born you? <laughs> you know. So it's it's very important. If we don't treat people uniquely like that, and we must not we must yes, if 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 we if we assume a person should be a particular way, we have missed it really. We have missed it. I actually used to do that. And I would be like, okay, this person is like this. Uh, that's it. Zip. And they are gone. Until I came to realize that I am projecting my own understanding of life on other people. They're not seeing things the same way that I do. So they may not know. The things that we assume are commonsensical. Your next person may not know, honestly. Even though, honestly. You know, mm. But you recognize that some people are... Sorry to say daft. Some people are daft. Why do we have people who are daft? You know, they're not just seeing things. They're not seeing what you think everybody's seeing. They're not seeing it. So that way, I reduce the, the people that I am angry with, actually. You can make excuses for people because they may not really know. So so it's what, what you're saying is really valid. We can, we can, but well, what is important, what we're trying to do here is to help people in a situation of adult emotional estrangement 
physical estrangement, they don't want to have anything. Can it work for you? I want to believe that's the goal of this, this, this program. Can it work for you? Yes, it can. Is it possible that you can restore your relationship with your sibling? Yes, it, you can. Must you force it? No, you shouldn't. Because the person you are dealing with is a unique individual. He has a reason for which he's doing what he's doing. If you can understand, if you can seek to understand him, you might find a situation in which, oh, you missed it all the while. I mean, you really, you really didn't know this person as you thought as you did. And with that kind of understanding, you can make it work together. But when that, that, that's, that kind of, uh, what I call it pragmatism, that kind of understanding or seeking to understand others is very, very essential. You know, no matter how far gone it is. Why should you be together when people have relationships that are working? They tend to live longer. They tend to live healthier. When relationships are not working, these are, these are scientific facts. When the relationships are not working, they tend to degrade the human mind. They tend to, and it affects the body. It affects the body. You know, even the Bible says that where there is no peace, there will be all manner of evil. Where there is, where there is um, fighting, that's the word. Where there is fighting, there will be all manner of evil. All manner of evil can come in. So we need to be able to do our best to make our relationships work. And it will start with you trying to understand the other person. When you have understood that other person, you're able to say, is this what you are saying? Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Is, I mean, I really didn't understand you all this while. That person now recognizes that you respect him and you respect his personality. You may not agree with the things that he does. You know, a person may do things that are not agreeable to you, shouldn't make him as an individual disagreeable to you. You must, you must be able to see that person beyond what he does that is how jesus christ treated people he saw them and treated them beyond what they were doing or what they did and saw their humanity if not he wouldn't have said to that woman put in adultery i don't i forgive you too i mean go and don't sin anymore i don't judge you you know, because she, he looked beyond what she did oh. and looked at this, her humanity. And when we begin to treat people like that, I always say, I, I think I told my son the other day, you know, is, I said, when people do things, separate what they are doing from who they are. Separate. If a person does something that is foolish, you can tell the person, you are not a fool, but what you are doing is foolish. Why? What's happening? <laughs> Why? It's, 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 it's very, very important that we, we do that. God always separates us. If God didn't separate us from what we do, he wouldn't have come to us. He wouldn't have come to he doesn't like what we do but he sees that we are different how he looks it he he, he he says i know this is what you did i don't like it but i will love you irrespective of it mm -hmm. i will love you my goal is to love you so that i will bring you to become a better person mm -hmm. now god is more infinite than we are and the way we treat people 
is will be different. Of course, it's definitely different the way God will treat us. But when we experience that thing within us, as we are treated kindly, even though we don't deserve it, we know we 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 look at ourselves differently. We look at those people who treated us kindly, despite we didn't deserve it. Look at them differently, you know. And so, one of the good things we can do is to treat people kindly, even though they don't deserve it. I have relations that many times they they speak to me in a way uh, that is un very very unkind, very very unkind. But I don't return in kind. I ask myself, what does God want me to do in this situation? And I act accordingly. And I'm kind. I not, don't always do that. Not I don't that. always do that. Not that. Once in a while, I, I, I can go over. But, but that is what we should do. What you is know? that? What are you saying? I said it's not that easy not to retaliate. No, it is not. I'm not saying it is easy. I'm saying it is possible. And not everything that is possible is easy. But God has not called us to ease. He has called us to do what is right. Those are two different things. We, we, yes, we live in a world where we want things that are easy. That's not what God called us to. He called us to do what is right. And we are free to do what is right. We are free to make those choices. And we should think, think deeply about those choices that we make. You know, I don't just do things that, ah, this is the, this is the way they do it. No, 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 no. I think, is this the right thing to do? Mm. Yes, this is the right thing to do. And many times, it may not even be in agreement with other people. But it's the right thing to do. That's what God has called us to. Except, so um, um, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, and I was going to say that, um, you know, the thing that happens with life is that, is that all right, we have things that guide us so that we can, this is what we're supposed to use as a guide. And that's why those things are there then if you're able to decipher, because sometimes the reason why I just thought to interrupt in quotes to, to bring this in is because some people, you know, we don't want to also expose people to abuse, right? Because because I, I, I belong to a group where I've seen people talk about things like this. Sometimes even parents or siblings are abusing people because they're abusing this idea that the person would have that this is the right thing to do, the godly thing to do. So sometimes you actually need to examine a person, you know, and that's why I said that thing that Coco was saying, she took two years, that's, and I've done it a long time ago, because if I examine you, sometimes I actually need to speak the language that you're speaking in order for us to be able to communicate. So it's, 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 it's um, for people to recognize also, this is actually the right way, what pastor is saying is the right way to do. But if you play into the hands of the wrong person, yeah, let me address that if you if yeah. you if you mind. Um, to be kind is not to be a fool. Absolutely, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> to be good is not to be a fool. To be good is not to be a simpleton. Mm -hmm. Let me check the name of that word. You know, to. To, to pursue peace is not to be stupid. It is, they're mm. not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it could be to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. but it's not to be a fool. To create the opportunity, the, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. So, so Jesus was somebody that did allow people to take him for granted. Mm -hmm. You couldn't take him for granted. Uh-huh. Have you did you notice that? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> you'll, just <laughs> be writing and, you'll just be writing and say, okay, so this is the way you see it. <laughs> so, yeah. You, you, you don't you don't you don't take him for granted. 
but he will point out to you what is right what is wrong with kindness and you too you will understand and see it and you need to understand him yeah so we need to we need to be able to deal with people with wisdom kindness and wisdom are not antithetical they are not opposites uh -huh. they are not opposites to be wise and to be kind they are not diametrically opposed uh -huh. they work hand in hand in fact to be a kind person you is the wise wisdom. thing to do <laughs> right you know and not only that to be tough sometimes is the is the kind thing it's kindness do. sometimes it's kindness kind. mm. yes it is kindness of love. of love you know so if you are not if you are not that tough then you're actually being wicked thank you <laughs> thank you for the lesson <laughs> yeah. yeah so so all these relationship dynamics we're able to apply them even in uh, adult relationships with our siblings, in our relationships with our siblings who are adults, the dynamics are, this, uh, are, are universal. You can apply them with your siblings and outsiders and friends. They are universal. How do you treat your siblings? Do you take them for granted because they are your siblings? Then that's the wrong thing to do. So, do you treat them as nobody i will grow up together not be you no these are those with families of their own you can't just treat them anyhow because they are your siblings you can't talk to them anyhow you can't relate to them i, I will stand and say no that's not the way to go yes actually that thank you so much because i was supposed to bring that point and i didn't mention it that's one thing that we need to keep in mind the way we treat our friends sometimes we wouldn't dare or the way we treat, we treat our siblings sometimes we don't dare do that to a friend a friend yes some of us yes some of us i think from our, especially from our background we treat our siblings like it's just my sister it's just my brother i can talk to them anyhow but you won't do that to your colleague at work you do that. That to we friend. need to rest the same the same they are they are, they are human they are if you if you speak to a person roughly whether it's a friend or a sibling they feel the same, same thing yes they feel the same thing yeah you know so those are those are things so let's not take our siblings for granted under any guise that's one of the things. Don't think that you, oh yeah, you must force them down, force something down their truth because oh they are the elder. You know, we are looking at things that can help us redeem relationships among siblings. It's possible, and like somebody said, it is possible that it will work. And you cannot be guilty for that. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot take the responsibility that it didn't work. Your efforts did not work. You know, but are you open to the possibility that it could work? Yes, you remain open. You continue to force it. You don't even have to force it at all from the beginning. You need to be able to, I mean, deal with kindness. Like I said, trying to understand a person is very, 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 very important. And many times when we're listening to simple communication dynamics, many times we're listening to people, we're only listening to them because we, are keep, we're, because we have something to say already. We're not really listening to understand what they are saying. Mm. We're not listening to know what they are not saying. <coughs> And it is these are essentials in dealing with especially siblings. Why? Because they are the ones we can easily just take for granted. Yeah. They are the ones we can just easily talk anywhere and expect that they should follow. No worries. I won't follow. Me, I won't follow. And I will tell you why this is not the way to go. I won't follow. 
we enter the meet at the end. I'm going to have to take this end and put it at the beginning. <laughs> put it at the beginning. And, and then, if I may, if I may, talking to a parent generation, if you are a grandfather or a grandmother, a matriarch of the family or a patriarch of the family, you notice that your adult children in their forties, fifties, don't see eye to eye. Please, now that you are still alive, before you leave the scene, call for a meeting and do all that is within your power as the father, either the surviving father or the surviving mother or surviving uncle or the as the elder to call these children, be it, this, be it a 60-year-old, a 50-something-year-old, a 40-something-year-old, send for your children. Have a meeting. Don't wait. Till, in fact, you'll be dead, so you will not even know that it's too late. Most siblings are just saying in their hearts, the only thing binding me to you is that our father is alive or our mother is alive. Once she goes, there's nothing between me and you. Actually, sometimes one of the reasons that creates these things for siblings is actually because if, you, if they pay attention, sometimes you'll see that even in the mother's family or in the father's family, they've done that same kind of thing. And so it's easy for the children to see it as something that, you know, it happens. And, so then, com thoughts. and then coming down to our generation of parents, we, the millennial parents now, you have children that you're bringing up please nip things in the bud if amongst your children be it two children three children four children no matter the amount of children you have please be very very observant if you notice a slight hint of sibling rivalry amongst your daughters or amongst your sons or amongst all your children, as a millennial young parent of young children, have a meeting. Call it to order. Nip it in the board. Because you don't know the far reaching consequences of looking the other way and not addressing it now. Now. Or supporting one against the other. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for that observation. So uh, we're about to close now. I don't know if anything has occurred to anyone that they feel that we really must share before we close. Um, something um, Pastor Solomon <clears throat> said in passing that's um, telling someone that what you are doing may be very foolish, but it doesn't mean you are a fool. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, um, I'm learning all over again that you must learn to separate people's actions from who they are. Mm -hmm. Love them for who they are you may hate their actions, you may hate what they do or what they're doing, but don't change your love for them or your affection towards them. Coco? Yeah, I think um, what Ajiri said last time, um, well, not just, just this bit, the, the one before this bit actually makes a lot of sense. It all boils down to the parents you know because um, if you're a victim of sibling rivalry or your digressor i do believe that when you sit down the aggressor and the sibling and, and the victim um amongst the siblings I'm, I'm sure if you interview them separately or reconciliation or whatever be rest assured that they will say okay I'm hating on this, my sibling, because it all tracks back to the way they feel the parents treated her, whatever. And I'm sure if you ask the victim, most of them will say, to be honest, I didn't even notice. So it's always that younger one, not even really, or older one, whichever one is being victimized, not really knowing. But I have friends that have been through it, and um, when we talk, they all say, Honestly, I can't even explain when I started being hated. They say, they always go, they say our parents did that, 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 that for me. Mm -hmm. I do, do you, oh, like, you know, but there's not once, in fact, there's an elderly woman 
she's in her 70s we had this conversation her dad was top 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 in those days and she said my siblings nearly killed me do you know till today and this is a woman that said at that time she was in her late 60s they, they they have it against her because they believe that she was put on a pedestal okay. now she knew her father loved her anyway but it, it was something that made her slightly uncomfortable she was young and it was something at that age she didn't really recognize and never insulted her older ones if that makes sense but you see because the older ones had it in their heads any little thing that she said to them which she could have ordinarily said was now so anyway cut the long story short it all boils down to the parents and just like Hajiri said we the millennial parents what we want to do is to correct because there's nothing we can do about us you know for those of us that are victims there's nothing you can do and for those that chose to be the aggressors still there's hardly anything they can do because their mind is set that way remember right from when they were little they chose to hate so it's it's hardly possible well in the scheme of things that them being in their 50s or 60s you start telling them about change why they shouldn't hate this their sibling it, it, they're set in their ways so let's just take it as a lost cause <laughs> but we yes it's true i think it's a better way of looking at it uh -huh. but we are the generation now that our kids are still we, we have the time we, we we can make that change and even if our children are teenagers my first one is 19 for those people that got really married um, early, married really early i guess their kids are in their 20s now it's still not late if that child is in your house and as a matter of fact if the child is now not in your house is not late remember what actually said about calling parents calling these children together to have that talk i think it will break a lot of ice you know i personally addressed something with my daughter something that took place between the ages of probably six to ten and she's 19 and we had this talk when she was 19 and I actually did apologize. It's, it's nothing major. It's nothing huge. It has nothing to do with setting help against it. No, no, no. I don't do that. It's just something to do with. You remember there was an episode of us that we uh, that we covered, and I told you about. I apologize to my children. I, I don't see any big deal in it because I want them to be better people too. I want to be a better person. If I feel I've been hard on you, that I could have handled it differently. Of course, I'll apologize to you. That's, that's not, you know, it, it doesn't make me lose my respect. If anything, it will gain me respect. And we talked about it. It had something to do with when I used to teach her, I would very occasionally lose it and i would actually physically discipline her now it didn't happen all the times but it did happen well that's the more good than one. It, it should have happened and i remember us talking about you know we talked about way back and i said to her i was telling her about my life that day when we we're talking and i said to her my parents never hit us fact never did but the only time i remember my dad laying a finger on me was when he was teaching whenever he's teaching you if you don't get it right the backhand right and i think i was telling my my daughter how we grew up i said oh come to think of it our parents didn't hate us uh, most african parents do but I, I i could say that in all fairness to my parents right and i said to her that's the only time i know my dad hit me and that was when i said to her oh and that's why when you were little Although I said I wouldn't do it, I think it affected me in a way that I felt that was the time I had the right to hit you when I was teaching you, okay? And she then told me, because I have to tell this story before people start thinking it's all about me, her sibling, no, 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 not, nothing to do with that. And I, and I, she, there was something that she said to me that, taught, she said to me that touched me. She said, um, and I'll never hit my kids when teaching them. And I was glad because I felt the circle had been broken. I felt I did that because that was what was done to me unconsciously, right? So when she said to me, mom, because I was telling her, you probably do the same. I'm not saying it's the right thing. And she said, oh, no, no, mommy. It's the one thing I've sworn that I will never do to my kid. And that made me feel really bad because for, I would have felt better had she said, oh, yeah, when my kids, when I have my own kids, if they're not getting it, I'll smack her. Maybe I would have felt better. But the fact that she said, 
is the one thing I'll never do. It actually occurred to me how much it would have affected her, right? It's a lot. Uh, it's yes. more than we know. It's more than yeah. That's why we have and it. I, it's still in line with what Adri is saying about the apology. Well, not apology, as in sorting things out. And that was my moment to sort that out. And of course, I apologize. I mean, it happened nine years earlier. But I felt, you know, then I had to further explain why I did that. And I, and I did admit that, listen, it wasn't the right thing to do. And I said to her, I'm glad you've broken this chain. So with your kids, at least you're not going to hit them when, you, when you're teaching them. You could hit them some other time, but definitely not. Because what I find is when you do that to a child, the thing that they know, they no longer know it, if that makes sense. Because you're scared of not getting it right. So you'd rather not answer even when you know it, but because you're not really sure, it, it, it's stupid, isn't it? Then you don't answer at all. Then you get hit, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a crazy thing, really. So anyway, back to the topic of sibling rivalry, really. Um, actually, my last word on it is you're quite right. If you're a parent that you're doing, it's the one thing I'll never do with my kids. It just starts with, there's even... I can't love more, one more than the other. And it shocks me when parents say they, they do. I, I don't see how I would go through the same pain with a, a lot of them. Even if I didn't go through pain with the, the, the... It's unnatural to just love one child more than the other. People that do it, I don't know how they do it. I, I don't know how they do it, but I, I can't. Because just like Pastor Solomon was saying, each child is individual... Uh, is an individual each one brings something to the table they cannot be the same that that's the truth that they, they all have their strength so it's not a matter of oh i prefer that one's strength more than the other ones that's what makes that child strong and if you want to remove the child i.e i think you're too quiet i want you to be a bit mm -mm -mm. yes you can but the truth is that child will never be that we, we, we like all over the place child because a child is naturally born quiet so what do you do you try as much as you can to bring the child to somewhere in the middle and that should be about it you know so yeah so my final word on it is i think borrowing what actually said it boils down to the parents the sibling rivalry parents watch out don't compare don't compare is the worst thing you will ever do no matter how mad you are don't say although although this needs to be said sometimes i don't want to use the word is necessary to mean that i do it because i don't sometimes the truth has to be told that in doing that is a very thin line you mustn't make it come out as like you want to say look at what your younger sister is doing if anything maybe look at what the older sister is doing doesn't come out in such a bad way but if you're going look at what you're younger that's a bit too much and and, and you mustn't use those words sometimes you have to tell the how to to say things like i need you to be straight i need to be really really straight because i don't want 10 15 20 years down the line you will start coming up with when everyone would have done better, when everyone would have done well. I don't want you to look back to say, this is the way I've given you all the same chances. Now, if you're putting it in that way, remember you're putting everyone in the mix. In essentially what you're saying is this family has a code, you know, we like doing things it's still, you know, but it's a tricky walk, walk to work. But uh, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to be very, very realistic. There are some times that that sort of conversation will come up, but you need to manage the words very, very well. Not to say, look at that one. It, no, no, no. It's 10, 15 years down the line, you know, kind of talk. You know, I want us all the choices that you make now. Everyone is making the right choices and you have to make those choices also. I will tell your younger sister this. I will tell your older sister this. You all need to make the right choices at this point. Because if you make the wrong choices, there are some people. You, I, I think that's a better way to word it. And um, that's my final say. Thank and, um, you. Can I just, just briefly, among our mm -hmm. girls, when we have daughters, there seems to be a tendency. There will always be someone prettier than the other or fairer or you know 
let uh, there seems to be a tendency to feel I'm not as beautiful as my sister or as outgoing as my sister or I don't get as much attention um, as mothers I have only one daughter so I don't have that problem thank God but for those who have them <laughs> for those who have, I have them, four for those I have yes, four girls and you know they all have different um, they all have different futures that enhance them okay we'll talk about this on its own that's a good one hmm. i think that's something that needs to be addressed among the girl okay. sisters girl children um one not every girl not every girl will be outgoing not every girl will be boisterous not every sister will be an eye catcher if i may say that word not every sister will have suitors all over her each to each his own but one should not be made to feel less beautiful than the other sister or less or less appealing than the other sister yeah there will always be someone that is more beautiful than you let's just face it yeah okay we'll handle that on its own that's a good one to note Focus on the strength of each child. The ugliest one might just have the best attitude. Focus on that. <laughs> the most beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just focus on that person's strength. Right. Pastor Solomon doesn't have that problem because he has a son. One son. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I have four girls and a boy, so... Let me just say my don't, son would have don't, that problem. Don't, it's important that we don't compare our children with each other. Mm. It is yeah. very, very important. Don't say, see your brother, whether he's elder or younger, don't do it. You are already pitching them against each other unwittingly. Mm. Well, the some parents do it deliberately. Oh, yeah, they do it deliberately because they think it's the, that's the way they know how to do it. They, that, it. That's the way they know how to do it. But when you say he's more, look at, look at, look at his results. Why? Look at John's results. Why? Why are you, why? What's, what's going on? Why are you not doing as well as he's doing? That's not the way to go. Hmm. Find out why John is not doing well, or Peter, or whoever is not doing well, and deal with it as an individual. And then, okay, just I want to say, I want to finally put it like this say this sibling rivalry um, could begin with the family. Most of the time, it be, starts from home in the way the parents did. But there can be also external factors. There can be distance. There can be uh, a fight that we have refused to resolve, that there is still unforgiveness running on the ground. There could be uh, uh, personal differences. I'm not like you, you're not like me. Rather than using it to complement, we're using it to uh, contrast and divide. Like I said, no two humans are the same. We should complement each other, even though we are not, not the same. You know, life pursuits can take us apart. So there are different things. You know, one emotes, one doesn't give a damn. That one, that one is just too weak. You look at him, it doesn't give a damn. But they are, they are differences but those differences can be used to complement rather than to divide you know it's right. possible that rival uh, uh, sibling estrangement can be dealt with confront it head on and it will yeah i'm not promising you it will work but at least you've made an effort to make peace right thank you thank you everyone for the contributions very valid points all noted that we can all learn from and thank you for being with us on this episode let's not take it for granted i'm sure that for those um to whom it matters they will take this they will take the notes and go to do what they can and 
if it really matters, you're not going to just want to just give up. Unless you give up before today and there isn't anything new that we've said, but if there's something new that we've said, then maybe you can try that. Thank you everyone for your contributions. And with that, we will close now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for being with us. Share this information for others to learn from. Bye-bye.